Alex, you can you behave yourself? I'm Nicole and welcome to episode 34 of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I am a left-handed crocheter, knitter, and general practitioner coming to you from Northern Virginia where I work and live with my fiance and our cat Webster. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest at NSP Designs, and in my Etsy shop where I make and sell handmade project bags, notions pouches, and other fiber accessories as well as original crochet pattern designs. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast which is linked in the description below and you can go there to find show notes for every episode as well as a get to know us thread and ask me anything thread and very soon plan to do it by now. Didn't get it done yet, but very soon you'll be able to find a thread for the crochet along that is starting for the podcast, which I'll talk about in a little bit. I think that is all of the admin out of the way for the episode. Um, I do need to announce the winner of the January monthly pattern giveaway. I realized much too late that I forgot to do it last episode. So I'm very sorry <laughs> to uh, the winner of January's giveaway but I will put your name on screen now and I will let you know very soon and you can tell me which pattern you would like from the available options. I have already opened the February thread and I'm doing something a little bit different in this one um, which ties into again the crochet along so I will just uh, I'll talk about this part of it now and then I'll kind of get into the rest of it later but the way that I work my monthly pattern giveaways um, if you've been around here a while you know is that you can choose if you win any pattern that I worked on on the podcast for that month. So um, it could be any of the existing uh, yarn, basically yarn patterns that I worked on knitting or crochet, or it could be a cross stitch pattern because I also do that. Um, it just, if it's a cross stitch pattern, you have to give me your email because they don't sell cross stitch patterns on Ravelry. But um, everyone so far has chosen a knitting or crochet pattern. And if you choose that, I just gift it to you on Ravelry. For February, because I am um, about to start sharing with you some upcoming crochet design projects which is exciting um, and since we are going to be launching a crochet along one of the potential prizes for February is um, my next crochet pattern which I will show you in the works in progress section I um, I want to be able to share it with you a lot because it is a crochet along um, but it is also a new pattern design so it is possible that there will be changes and things along the way but I think I, I think I want to share this one with you guys um, so basically I'm just giving you the option if you win the February giveaway. I think I will do this for every month that I work on the pattern, so it'll be a continuous option. Um, you can choose to get, get um, that pattern design from me as your prize. Um, the only thing is you can't get it until it's done. So if you win the February pattern giveaway and your prize choice is my forthcoming crochet design, um, you might not get it until I publish it, which might be April or May, um, but I will make a note that you did win it and I will write down your Ravelry username and when the pattern is released, I will gift you a free copy immediately. Um, so I did want to make that choice available. I thought it would be a fun way um, to incorporate that into the monthly giveaway cycle and since it is technically a work in progress for the months that I'm working on it, I wanted to make it eligible, but you're just not going to be able to get a copy of it until it's ready for release. Um, so yes, that is out of the way. I have announced the January winner. I will get in touch with you very soon. Um, and you can let me know what pattern you want. And the February thread once again is open. And now I'm going to get into the fibery stuff. Uh, I have a coffee here in my one Valentine's Day themed mug that I own. It's not even very overtly Valentine's Day. It's just kind of a, a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but his face is a heart and it is from a old Target. Does it have does it have a year on it? No, but it's from an old Target Valentine's Day collection. Um, it was just a little monkey mug. I also want to mention that this past weekend I went and visited my best friend Rachel. She's my best friend and maid of honor and we went up and visited her in the greater Philadelphia area and while I was there Rachel and I filmed a video together. So uh, if you are a regular watcher of Fiber podcasts. You probably are familiar with the Fiber Friends tag by this point. Um, lots and lots of people have done it, and usually you do it with uh, your spouse or significant other. Uh, that's just not the kind of thing that I I didn't think that Adam would be into doing that with me. So I did it with Rachel, and we also did a like best friends tag. We just found a random one on the internet and answered some of those questions as well. Um, 
So I am working on editing that. I don't know when it's going to go up in relation to this video. It's probably going to go up after this video. I just I need to get them both done. And I don't really know when I'm going to do it. But that's coming. It's, I, it's fun. It was fun for us. I hope you guys think it's fun. But uh, that will be on the way as well. So you'll see that going up at some point. Um, and the crochet along is going to start soon as well. So I'm just going to I keep talking about stuff that's, that's going to come later in the video. And I'm going to make the later in the video now in the video. So I'm going to take another sip of my coffee, put it down, and just start talking about stuff. Okay, first work in progress, and will soon be a work in progress no more, is my Guthrie sweater. I am almost done. I am on the last sleeve island and really making progress. So last week, did I take the Yeti off? I might have. Yes. Last week, I took the Yeti off. So I think I was about here on this sleeve last week. And so I did all of this, and my cuff... Um, on the drive to and from Rachel's last weekend. And I um, I talked about this last week, but I knit my sleeves on Addy Flexi Flips. It was my first time trying them. I really, really like them. I actually like them so much that I treated myself to a pair um, on, on payday. Um, <laughs> I treated myself to a pair of size two Flexi Flips because I didn't have them. Um, and I needed them to do the cuff and they're amazing. So they are my new go-to for small circumference, um, tube things <laughs> from now on. And I'm on the second sleeve now. I'm right about here. I'm just a few rows onto the sleeve. I will say, so, um, when I separated this sweater for the sleeves, it's a top-down sweater. This is the Guthrie sweater by Boyland Networks. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with it by now. Here we go. Uh, it's a top-down sweater, and when I separated for the sleeves, I had two empty pairs of the correct size needles, and so I put all of my sleeve stitches for both sides, each onto a set of needles. Um, and I did want to clarify that when it is t it came time to work on the sleeves, um, I did not immediately start working with the flexi flips because you have to pick up underarm stitches and I thought that that would be kind of tricky with these needles. I might be wrong. I don't know. I haven't tried it. It just, the, the prospect seemed like it could be tricky. So I ended up, um, getting, uh, use, knitting two rounds on, with magic loop, basically on the pair of needles that the sleeve was on. Um, and that made it, it just was like one less thing for me to worry about to cast on the extra stitches or pick up the extra stitches that I needed to pick up and go through all that um, and not have to worry about finagling the different needles and stitches falling off the end of one of my flexi flips and closing up armpit holes and all that stuff. So I, I did the initial uh, armhole pickup round and then one or two rows after that I did on regular fixed um, circulars with magic loop and then I knit them onto flexi flips and that's how I'm doing the rest of the sleeve. And that's where I am. So uh, we are doing some driving again this weekend, which means I will have car knitting time. Um, we are going up to Baltimore to do some wedding stuff. We are going to go meet with our florist and our moms. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to go to the florist and do the flower picking, <laughs> choosing, ordering. Um, and then we are also going to go and do a couple other wedding related things. We have to do a little bit of shopping. We have to go to our venue. We have to go to Ikea. Uh, it's just going to be, um, another, another day trip up there. So I have car knitting time on the way up and potentially on the way home. It kind of depends on when we head back home and if it's dark out, but I think if all goes well, I should have some carnating time both ways. So I think that I might be able to get that sleeve done on that trip as well. We will see. And if that is the case, then I just need to uh, block and weave in ends and I will have a finished country sweater for you next week. Very exciting. I'm going to do my other work in progress and then I'll show you my new start. My cross stitch work in progress. This is Mr. and Mrs. from Stitcherovia. I'm not gonna bother to take it out of the stand this week because I'm lazy. Once again, it doesn't look like I did much and that's because I didn't do much. Um, I did like these two bits right here basically and that's it. Um, I gotta get back to it. I gotta get back to a lot of things. It's fine. It's fine. No pressure. Um, 
but that is Mr. and Mrs. by Stitrovia. I did a color change. I still haven't told you what the colors I switched out are. I'll get to it. <laughs> um, but that is coming along. And I now have a new start to share with you. And that is my crochet project. Now I've been talking about this for a little while. But I, when friends of mine, friends, family, loved ones get married or have babies, I like to gift them crochet blankets. And I tend to design them. I have only released one blanket design pattern so far. I actually have another one all written up and I just haven't formatted it and um, all that good stuff. So I could release that and I probably will at some point. I'd actually kind of like to make that one again because, uh, not to toot my own horn, but it was really pretty and I kind of want one. <laughs> So as soon as I have, you know, all of the free time in the world, I'll make another one and then I'll release the pattern. But this one is for my high school best friend. She's getting married in May and I decided to design the afghan that I would gift her. I showed you last week that I had the yarn. I'm using Knit Picks Mighty Stitch. Oh, my Guthrie is a Knit Picks Swish DK in the colors Garnet Heather and Dove Heather. And this is Knit Picks Mighty Stitch in just in white. Um, and here's what I have so far. I had to, um, I've already gone through a couple of design changes with this so far. I had an entirely different plan at first, and then I changed that plan, and then that plan I changed also, it was also entirely different, so I frogged that, and now I'm here. Um, <laughs> such is the way with designing. I will say, um, I'm a very adventurous crocheter. I'm not, I don't have the same attitude at all uh, between knitting and crochet. I tend to be pretty afraid of knitting. Um, it just seems a lot scarier to me. Techniques seem harder and it seems harder to fix or hide mistakes. And crochet, I'll pretty much try anything immediately and do whatever. Um, I will say that this is not a necessarily easy pattern. Um, it's going to involve you can see um, it's going to involve these are post stitches they're cables this is like a little cabled pattern it's not really a cable cable it'll kind of have the look of cables it's more like just textured raised stitches um, and then there's going to be a little bit of cable action here with some popcorns uh, you just have to kind of um, keep an eye on where you are basically. It, it, it definitely gets into a meditative groove, but the first few rows especially, you're kind of setting up for the pattern that repeats the rest of the blanket, so you do have to pay a little bit of attention. Um, so I would not recommend it for a beginner beginner, but if you're adventurous uh, and you can do, you're familiar with post stitches or you want to learn, great. If you're familiar with popcorns or you want to learn, great. And otherwise, it's chains, single crochets, and double crochets. That's really all you're doing the whole time other than the post stitches. So I would not call it difficult, but I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna lie and say that I think any old crochet beginner could pick it up and have a great time. Um, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm excited to be designing crochet stuff again. I meant to do a lot more of it in 2018 and then I just kind of got down a knitting rabbit hole. Honestly, I knit my first sweater in 2018 and then I have had a sweater on the needles ever since then because it turns out that I'm a sweater knitter. I really, really like it. Um, and that ate up a lot of my time. But I'm happy to be designing crochet stuff again. I actually have a couple other pattern ideas that I want to come up with this year, uh, come up with and come out with this year. So keep an eye out for that. I think now that I'm back to crochet designing, I'm hoping that I can keep this up for a little while. I'm already thinking of yarns for these other designs that I want to do. Um, I'd really like to feature some indie dyers for those designs. I obviously have some stash that I could pull from, but I'm also on the lookout for indie dyers who I'd like to feature, um, and especially with the ongoing conversations in the knitting community about um, diversity and inclusion, I would really love to find um, some dyers who are um, people of color, and I would like to share them with uh, my community, the people who watch my videos and my Instagram. So if you can recommend dyers that you think might be uh, good for that, might be interesting, dyers that you love, that you want to recommend to me, let me know in the comments. That is my crochet design uh, work in progress for right now. I'm not super far. I've got maybe like two inches done, um, but I'm trucking along. Here's my skein. This is not living in an interesting project bag right now. I need to make myself a blanket size bag. I make these bags for my shop on a made-to-order only basis because they are huge and would just be cumbersome. They would be time consuming for me to like be making stock um, if they're not selling all the time and they use up a lot of fabric and they're just kind of cumbersome to make 
on a mass basis, or not even like a mass basis because I don't mass make anything, but um, I tend to make ahead and store bags and pouches and stuff, and this size bag would not be, that would not be um, like smart <laughs> for me to do. So I make these bags only on a made to order basis and they are gigantic. I call them blanket bags. Um, they're huge. They're made to fit big blanket projects. I need to make myself one. I, I have the fabric for that. I plan to do that this week. Um, so maybe that's something that I'll share with you next week. But for now, the yarn is just kind of hanging out. Most of the yarn is still hanging out in the shipping box that it came in. And then a few skeins are in a, just a regular tote bag that I'm stuck them in for now. But I'm going to be making myself a blanket bag very soon. And that is my crochet progress. And now I want to talk about the crochet long. I'm just gonna reach off camera here for my coffee. Can I find it? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> crochet along. I informally announced this last week. I want to do a crochet along for crochet afghans. I talked about this on uh, Instagram when people seemed interested, so I want to roll with it. I also think it would be a great way to help keep me on task and accountable for this project. The other afghan projects that I have, you know, planned for the year. Um, and the one that I already have in progress that I haven't touched in over a year that I have not told anybody about on this podcast. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I think it will be fun. I know people have been wanting to see more crochet updates from me. And, um, there are lots of knitters I know who talk about how they want to delve into crochet afghan making. And I think this would be a great way to, like, kind of foster that and encourage it. So I'm going to call it the NSP uh, comfy crochet cow. I thought about doing the cozy cow, but somebody else is using that hashtag already and I don't want to infringe upon it. So it's going to be the NSP comfy crochet cow. I will put it on the screen here. Um, and I will start a thread in the Ravelry group. I think I'm going to do what most people seem to do when they make these cowls, which is there will be one Ravelry group thread for chatter, where you can post updates about your works in progress. If you want advice on colors, on patterns, um, any of that stuff, you can put it in there, and then I will make a thread for finished objects where I just want you to post your finished objects, and that is uh, um, where I will pull a main prize from. I do want to have some prizes for the cow, as is the custom, um, so I think that one of the prizes I will offer will be a blanket bag from me, since this is a blanket cow, um, so it will be a custom blanket bag from me. We can talk, me and the winner, about fabric choice and all that good stuff when the winner is drawn. Um, and I'd like to come up with some other prizes as well, maybe some yarn, uh, maybe some patterns. I don't know, I have to kind of look into it and see if there's any um, stuff from my stash maybe that I could make into prizes. Uh, if anyone is watching and would like to donate a prize, if you are a maker, if you make stitch markers or, or yarn or whatever and you think you'd like to donate, get in touch with me and we can talk about it. Um, I'd love to have that as well and to share your work with people who participate in the Cal, feature makers, etc. Um, so yeah, I initially I thought that I would have the cow run from now to uh, Memorial Day weekend because that is my deadline for this blanket, but I also want to make another blanket this year. So now I'm wondering if a better deadline would be um, like December 31st, if we would just make it a whole year thing. Let me know what you think about that because I will do whatever we want. I could also make two deadlines, have like a midpoint be the Memorial Day weekend one and maybe draw a couple prizes there and then we can keep going for the rest of the year if we all liked it. I might do that. Um, I will post a thread with some general rules. I think for now I'll keep the deadline at Memorial Day weekend, but if I hear from you guys that you want it extended, we can do that easily. Um, and that's going to be what it is. So it needs to be um, a blanket that you, it has to be crocheted blanket. It has to be a blanket that you start in 2019, um, and there will be a finished objects thread with prizes, so to be eligible for that thread, you have to finish it by the deadline. But um, I'm, as I said, I'm also going to make a chatter thread, and I might pull some winners from there as well for prizes. It kind of depends on what my situation is, if I'm able to get more prizes or or what. Um, I might gift a couple of my crochet patterns as prizes as well. Uh, i got to see how it all shakes out, but there will be prizes is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so those are going to be, I think that's all the rules. Started this year, crochet pattern, Afghan pattern, and finish it by the deadline to be eligible for finished object prizes. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the crochet along. I will probably make an Instagram post about it, and we will be posting on Instagram under the hashtag that I mentioned before. Um, 
and I will be making updates and all that good stuff. I think I will make an Instagram story highlight on my Instagram feed um, that you can take a look at as well just to keep to keep stuff there so it doesn't disappear after 24 hours. And that will be the crochet long. I'm pretty excited about it. I've never done one before. Obviously, I've barely even participated in Cal's before. I've done a couple here and there, but I didn't keep up with them very well. So I'm excited about this. Hopefully the fact that I have to be in charge of one will make me actually keep up with it. And that's pretty much everything going on with me. Um, as a reading update, I am still reading My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Khan Braithwaite um, as a physical book. And then this week I also finished an audiobook. I started and finished it. It's called We Cast a Shadow by um, Maurice Carlos Ruffin. That was really good. Um, I felt like it was really a really pertinent read given the discussions that have been going on in our community lately. Um, it just came out. I had actually pre-ordered it on Audible because I heard about it somewhere. Someone recommended it to me or I heard about it somehow and it sounded really good so I pre-ordered it on Audible and I listened to the audiobook. Uh, it was really good. Um, it was... Uh, it, prescient and heartbreaking and frustrating and compelling and just it was it was good and I would recommend it um if you have been feeling passionate about the conversations going on in the community lately and if you are interested in expanding your reading horizons and your perspectives and all that good stuff and now the audiobook I'm listening to is called The Cadaver King and the Country Dentist I think is the the title, but it's basically about a, um, a forensic, exa a medical examiner and a dentist turned forensic expert in Mississippi who basically, um, f forged and fabricated evidence in tons and tons of criminal cases in Mississippi and put a lot of wrongfully convicted people in jail. So that's also a frustrating book for a different reason. And it's a nonfiction book. This is true. This happened because the world is a great place. Um, and that's what I'm reading this week. Um, and the physical book I'm reading, My Sister the Serial Killer, is really good too. I'm getting close to the end. Things are getting uh, a little tense and I'm really liking it. So I should possibly have that done next week and I'll be able to talk to you about that as well. And that's my book update. In terms of life update, I mentioned that we are going to Baltimore this weekend to meet with our florist. So that's the latest wedding development. We actually got some supplies recently for our centerpieces, which is very cool. Uh, so there are just like boxes of glass vases hanging out in the apartment. <laughs> we're going to drop them off this weekend while we're in Baltimore as well so that they don't have to hang around here for nine months. But um, yeah, things are moving. I'm getting to a point. I'm starting to feel a little sweaty <laughs> about all the crafts I have to do. I was real chill for a long time. I was like, no, I'm not stressed. I have so much time. I can't do anything yet. And now I'm low key um, getting anxious. So <laughs> stay tuned to see how that works out. Uh, I think it'll be okay. I'm just kind of, every time I really stop and think about all the stuff that I decided to make myself, I get, I get sweaty. It's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. I'm, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. That's the latest um, wedding update slash life update. Uh, that's everything that's going on. Fiber share is happening right now. Um, I have tons of new stuff that's been going into the shop lately. Actually, I'll show you that. I have a lot of new stuff going into the shop lately. I've been working super hard um, because I knew that fiber share was coming and people were gonna want goodies. And my shop was just a little bit bare. Um, so I wanted to remedy that. So I have this print which if you've been with me for a while, you know that I have this in other colors. Where's my project pouch? <clears throat> I originally had it in this fabric, this uh, version rather, around the holidays, um, which I could not get hold of more of this, or at least not at the moment, but I found this version, which is fun neutral gray. And then I found this lining, which is super fun. It kind of looks like like abstract stuck in that sort of. Um, with this being neutral, I wanted to do like a fun touch of color. So this actually, this is my large bag size. This bag is sold. <laughs> um, I sold out of this size and this fabric pretty quickly, which I'm super thankful for. Um, it made me really happy because um, I've been working so hard and to see them go so quickly was just like, it was gratifying and I'm really grateful. Um, but this is the lining and then I still have I still have one or two medium size bags left. Um, so that's this size 
bag with a zipper and that the zipper is the same fun like peachy pink orange color on this fabric as well. Uh, so that's new in the shop. I also have this fabric <laughs> new in the shop. This is a fabric that I've had for quite a long time um, and I was looking for the right lining and I was being really indecisive and stubborn about it and then I found this and it's perfect and amazing. Look at that. Someone on Instagram, I posted about this a while ago, someone on Instagram said that it reminded them of pizza. <laughs> which is hilarious. So that's in the shop. Um, in that sweater print, I also have, I put them away because I'm the worst. In this sweater print, I also have um, DPN cozies and project pouches, which are this size. I have project pouches in this. Uh, and um, I restocked my coffee and donuts pattern which has been a crowd favorite for quite a while. So there are three of these, two of these in the shop and project pouches are coming soon. And I think some DPN cozies are coming soon too. There will be project pouches in the globes as well. And then this one is new in the shop too. I am obsessed with these sheep. These sheep were an impulse purchase, but I'm not sorry about it because they are so freaking cute. Hello. There are a couple more medium bags uh, in this fabric. There are project pouches, DPN cozies, and there are going to be, I have this fun polka dot fabric. I love me a good polka dot. Can I just say that? Polka dots. I love you. Um, this is not listed yet. There will be two of these. I need to photograph and list this, but this will be in the shop soon as well. And then I have a Valentine's Day fabric that I got. It's not your traditional Valentine's Day fabric because I feel like a lot of those fabrics are kind of hokey and eh. Um, this is just a fun hot pink metallic print if I think of it all include a picture because I put the bags, the finished bags away to keep them safe from the cat and I don't really dig them out. So uh, I'll try to stick a picture in here. I have medium bags and project patches in that fabric as well. I'm really excited about it. I love it. It's metallic and awesome and I haven't seen other, a lot of other project bags. I, can't, I don't know if I've seen any other project bags that look like that that have a metallic on it. If I haven't, I haven't seen many, I just got really excited about it. Um, so they're in the shop as well. And I'm doing a lot of restocking lately. Uh, I'm trying to stay on the ball and get lots of stuff in the shop and have lots of options and be on my game. Uh, so there's a little shop update for you. And again, because Fibershare is on, I am very fortunate in that I am a featured shop with Fibershare. And there is a promo code right now where you can get 15% off anything in my shop. Um, the code is share yarn, make friends, all one word. Um, and if you go on the Fibershare website, you can actually go to the discount codes page and shop tons of other makers as well, um, who all have that discount code, including one of my former Fibershare partners, um, Onyx Fiber Arts. She is a yarn dyer. She dyes lovely yarn. She sent to me in the first round last year, I think, and she's lovely yarn. It's all beautiful. She dyed some yarn for me then and it was perfect and I loved it. Um, so she's got a sale going on now for Fibershare as well as a bunch of other makers. Um, some of the names I'm sure will be familiar to you and there are some that I've never heard of before. So I would recommend going there. Even if you're not participating in Fibershare, I would recommend going there and scrolling through the page just to discover all the cool new makers that are there. Um, so that is a shop update and I think that's officially everything that I have to talk to you about. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you were new, thanks for spending some time with me. If you were a return viewer, thank you for coming back. If you want to keep up with me and know anytime I post a new video, you can subscribe and um, have a good week. Get lots of crafting done and I will see you next time. Bye!